have seen some of our stories earlier this week uh, and that's the issue of fake doctors. The Health Professions Council of South Africa, the HPCSA, has expressed concern about the increase in the number of these bogus practitioners. The HSBCA says that based on the number of arrests, some of the transgressors are in fact uh, registered practitioners who are employing unregistered persons to practice their profession that requires registration with the HPCSA. Uh, to get a, a look and an and understanding on this worrying trend, we're now joined by the president of the HPCSA, Dr. Jose Litlape. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and welcome to you. Uh, thank you for the invite and good evening to you. All right, so what sort of numbers are we looking at? What have you been able to unearth? And I, s and, and I say this based on what you know because you don't know what you don't know, what the total population might be. Well, just this calendar year, mm. we have close to 500 cases that have been looked into by our inspectorate unit. And 40 of those matters mm. are in the courts now. And when you look at it, we don't really have the capacity because we only set up the inspectorate office the end of 2015. Wow. And in that short period, we almost to 1,000 cases. So if we had the capacity, mm. we would be, you know, revealing a lot more cases than that. So what we're really asking is for the society to work with us and to be vigilant. Mm. And at the point where we are, <coughs> every practitioner that is out there mm. needs to be verified by the people that use the services of that practitioner. So how does one know whether a doctor is bogus or not? I mean, you could have somebody who did two years of med school, so he has enough language to convince people when they come to see them how, how do I know is there? The, the only way you're going to know mm. is by verifying. And, you know, the easiest way to verify is to go <coughs> onto the website of the HPCSA, mm -hmm. www.hpcsa.co.za. Then there'll be a frame for the public. And once you go in there, mm. you can go to searching for practitioners. Mm. And there's an easy way to search. You can put the surname of the practitioner, right. the full names, the registration number, the address. So there are a few fields for searching. But the easiest way is if you have the surname, you'll then have all doctors under that surname and you, you'll do the search of the matching one in terms of address, other first right. names. But where it does become tricky, of course, is that you come into the building, you think you're going to see Dr. Litlape. Dr. Litlape is playing golf, so he sent in a locum and you don't know the name of this doctor. And these are the ones that are playing most of the games, isn't it? Yes, th th that's part of the game. Mm. And what we now advising society to do is that if you're going and you find someone that is not the owner of the practice, mm. you have a right to be asking them, uh, who are you, doctor? Right. Uh, can I see your practicing card? Right. Uh, because under those circumstances, it's not your usual supply of service yeah. is not matching the name on the practice mm. and every practitioner is expected to have a practicing card that are okay. issued on an annual basis it's a small card okay and the person I'm should be able see to if produce our guys it. can pick this up so whilst we're talking so each doctor must have one of these practicing cards um, and they can present it to you. It's almost like they an ID card an for ID a doctor. Card. They have to have it on, on right. them. It's valid right. for a year from right. the first uh, of April right. of 2017 yeah. to the end of March 2018 and it's got right. to be renewed annually and the thing that is linked to that is that in the professions that we deal with yeah. continued competence is essential right. so for them to get a renewed card they need to meet certain conditions so, so that's the only way you ensure that your doctor at least meets the minimum standard so even if it's your regular doctor yeah. it is in your interest to just to go onto the website and see whether and this, this person is, is updating practice. themselves they are active on the register so if you have a doctor who's come in from the drc last week uh, what he must follow these steps get registered first get a card before he can act as a locum anywhere B before you practice this profession, yeah. you must be registered right. uh, as right. a legal right. condi condition with the Health Professions Council. If you uh -huh. practice without being registered, that's unlawful, that's criminal activity. So even if you are a bona fide v yeah. doctor from where you come from, you'd be violating our laws. And because you're not on the register, mm. we can't take professional actions against you. 
And that's why we've established an inspectorate mm -hmm. office that works in conjunction with the South African Police Services and the Hawks. Okay. So when we've got information and you do not appear on our register and you are mm -hmm. practicing, you will be raided in conjunction with the SAPS and the Hawks. All right. So have there been some consequences in terms of uh, patients uh, visiting bogus doctors? I would imagine they're getting medicines prescribed. They are getting injections given to them. Uh, do you know of we, any... We, we wouldn't know. Mm. Uh, uh, I remember when I was chair of one of the prelim committees, one of the cases that we dealt with a few years ago was what turned out to be a bogus doctor mm. who had done a circumcision that wow. did not go well. So there have been a few cases where when we, the matters were reported, mm. we then found out that the person was a bogus doctor. But the majority of cases that we have on complaints and unprofessional practice are people that are registered mm. with us. We have a quandary because we can only investigate you if you are registered. If you're not registered, it becomes a police matter and we then refer that mm. matter to the police. So where do, do you draw the line? Because you've got all manner of health practitioners now. You know, if you've got people who call themselves herbalists, um, um, this path, that path, where do we get to a point where we say you're a bogus doctor and you're not a doctor and, and all of these other sort of esoteric uh, uh, pr professions? Well, you will see that what the new government has tried to do or, and has achieved to do is to establish even a, a council for traditional healers. Mm. So anyone in terms of our laws and outlook that w professes to be a healer mm. needs to be registered. You, you still have the other spaces of faith healers, yes, water healers, yes. but anybody that says this is an art form that would require training right. requires to be registered. So you need to create a statutory body that is then responsible for the education okay. and training and you train in an accredited facility and you right. get registration. So faith healers fall out of this? Uh, faith healers w w will have to find a different mechanism to deal with those. But you see, uh, this and, and that is why mm. there's this thing of regularizing and regulating right. the religious groups okay. because they are also now getting into the healing space mm. which becomes problematic. So your doctors must clearly have some designation written medical doctor MBCHB yeah. uh, whatever. Remember this also goes beyond just medical yeah. doctors. We register nearly 30 healthcare professionals okay. that includes dietitians optometrists, right. psychologists. And so they must all have of these them cards as well. have these cards as well. And if you look at that card, yeah. that card will tell you that my registration yes. category, my profession. So it tell okay. you, I'm a medical practitioner. I'm a specialist. Okay. I'm an ophthalmologist. Yeah. So it will say, I'm a psychologist. If right. there's a particular discipline, in what discipline am I? Am I a neuropsychologist? Okay. Am I an educational psychologist? It will say, I'm an optometrist. Here's my registration number with cancer. So even if there are issues of complaints about the service, you can come to the regulator to deal okay. with those issues. So if I'm in the waiting room now, I can ask for the name, I can get onto my phone, uh, go to the HPCSA uh, website, type in the name, and I should get, whether this person is currently licensed or not licensed, uh, straight away. Yes, you should be able to get that <coughs> straight away. Remember also that even before you get in, yeah. uh, there are regulations where you need to have a plaque right. of who you are, what profession you practice, what are your qualifications right. and then inside you'll get further information but just on those on that information it's of the name. surname and the names you are able to get onto our website to verify okay and so th to advise our, our viewers if the name doesn't appear on the website it's best to assume that this person is not a registered here if you are not on the register you are not active there would be a problem some of them might turn out to be administrative problems where a person has not renewed, but then they are illegal practitioners. So they are practicing illegally. So we must differentiate that, even if it's your regular doctor, yeah. just it is in your own interest, just to do Check. a verification from time to time. Are they in good standing? Mm. Taxi drivers, you've got to go and renew your public mm. driving permit. Even with healthcare okay. practitioners, you've got to renew 
your registration mm -hmm. with the relevant statutory body. Okay, I've run out of time, but one very quick and important question. There are some doctors that are getting sued quite often and they've got a number of cases before uh, being reviewed. Is there a way that I can check whether this person hasn't got uh, litigations? Because that s talks to, to your competence really, doesn't it? Yes, I you can. Once a doctor has been found guilty of mm. professional misconduct, mm. they are listed on our website with so that. We can so you can over. find that information. But if it's still under investigation right. before there's an outcome, you're not going to find that information on the website because we cannot put matters that have not right. been concluded right. because we don't know what the outcome is going to be. So we can't cast aspersions on the character of a person when the due process has not been completed. Okay, Dr. Litlava, we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you very much indeed for highlighting this very worrying uh, trend. Um, nearly 500 yeah. doctors out Unfortunately, there. Unfortunately, mm. because our values crisis, it's up to you to ensure that whoever you see mm. is who they say they are. Even if you've been seeing them for 20 years, yeah. uh, we've just had a practitioner that was out there for 10 years. Wow. So it should not be about duration and it should not be about the character of a person. Mm. It's just for you to verify that the person is still yes, current, the person is in good standing. All right, thank you very, very much indeed. So there you have it. Be careful and uh, more than any other practitioner, I think, you know, we blind faith with doctors. So make sure that they have uh, the credentials and the license to practice before you put their, your lives in their hands. We're going to take a quick break.